I'm sitting here watching uh, an eBay bid on a realistic DX160 receiver and speaker. And it just crossed, uh, you know, the minute mark. So I like to do this every once in a while while I'm like eating my lunch or something. I'll find something that, uh, like this, you know, just to see who blinks first. This thing's had 12 bidders. It's kind of fun just to watch. <laughs> you know? So we'll just watch this one count down. It's been sitting at $41 for a long time. If somebody gets this rig for $41, that's a good deal. I wouldn't pay over $65, $70 at the most for it, though. You know, depending on condition, I wouldn't pay that much for any of them. But well, we're down to 17 seconds, 16. Still sitting at $41. I wonder how many bids will come in at the last second. That's a pretty cheap price for that rig. If it goes for 41, I'm going to be upset that I didn't bid on it. <laughs> oh, it's up to 51. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it went up $10. It's now timed out. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what it sold. It sold for $51 with 13 bids. That's a pretty good deal. Here's the record of that bid. In the last minute, <clears throat> this joker here popped in with $45, and he had bid uh, before down here at 40 he popped in the last few seconds, he popped in at uh, 45, and then he popped in again at 50, and then some guy came out of nowhere, you know, and hit it with 51. He probably bid over 51, that's all he needed to beat this guy. But he just popped in out of nowhere and took it. Congratulations, guy, you did a good job on that. All right, we're about ready to solder the two ends together. Uh, one end that comes through the coil form, and the other end that comes wrapped around it. What I've done here is made a little twist there. There's not enough wire to go around the form one more time so we're going to lose a little bit more. But now that the twist has been made and the outside coating has been removed it's simply a matter of putting some solder to it and then nipping off the extra wire. I haven't yet soldered uh, that wire but I decided to look at the rest of the coil underneath this magnifying glass and lo and behold at the opposite end we have another break. It was laying down and I didn't notice it. So what we're going to do is the remaining wire that's left over from the other end after I solder, we're going to attach it to one end of the broken end here and go ahead and stretch it over and see if I can't splice it between those two wires. This is the primary uh, of the uh, transformer I believe. I think the primary is on top, secondary is the lard, the long one. We're going to give it the old college try. We're going to try to repair this thing and if it turns out where it just can't be done then I'll just have to make a brand new coil just like Rick McWhorter told me to do and I shall do it because I have the wire to do it with. The first set of wires have been soldered. Now I'm going to go ahead and nip them off. Before we go any further, I'm going to take a little bit of this liquid tape on the end of my screwdriver and I'm going to put a little dab of liquid tape on that wire to kind of hold it in place. And where it goes through the uh, body of the coil form. It had a dab of this kind of stuff on it when I started, but it flaked all off it being so old. Now I'm going to go around, when this dries, I'm going to go around and look at the rest of this thing, and put little dabs here and there where it was originally. There's the two dabs. One where it goes through the coil, and the other one just there to hold it in place. You know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to putting more dabs of that stuff wherever it needed. Not a problem. Anything that will keep it from coming uncoiled, that's what it's all about. Man, I tell you what, I hope this thing works. I don't want to have to make a new coil. <laughs> At the other end, the wire has been spliced and soldered. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep it away from the rest of those uh, wire turns, though. I've got it held away with a piece of tape. And then I'm going to put some of that liquid tape on there to cover the solder joint and to hold it away. The other end of the splice has been soldered. All I did was wrap it around a couple of times and solder it in place. I had to be very careful where that wire goes through the that big blob of black uh, stuff there. 
Uh, if I'd have broke it off there, it'd have been long. I'd have had to dig all that out and try to find out where the wire was. So I had to be very careful. Right now, the splice has been made. I'm going to go ahead and cover that up with some more of that liquid tape, just like that one right there. It looks pretty good, I think. Insulates it real well, holds it in place. Well, that's it for that uh, coil for the coil, and. Uh, it's fixed on both ends. It'd be kind of hard pressed to find out where it was fixed. I'm kind of happy the way that turned out. Now we have to check the continuity. Now according to the schematic, this black wire here that's missing some of the insulation, I'll be replacing that later. That's the ground. And that ground should show continuity with this red wire which connects to the one of the variable capacitor uh, connections up there. The one that had that nut on it, this came off the nut and uh, those two should have continuity and this white wire here and this green wire should have continuity. So let's test that out. Alright, I've got the uh, black wire hooked to the ground and I will connect uh, this onto the red one here. I'm just going to take that alligator clip and close it on there. You keep your eye on the meter. This would be the secondary of this uh, transformer. There it is. Secondary is good. Secondary is good. Now let's try the green wire here and the white wire here. Now if this this is the primary. Now if this checks this transformer is ready to go back in but not before I change out the 3.3 capacitors. I want to get that done before I put the coil back in. Here it goes. Good to go. The wires have all been cut uh, leading to the three capacitors inside this uh, container and all three capacitors have now been replaced with these three and uh, these are these are 0.33 microfarad capacitors uh, inside there you'll recall was point, point 0.3 so they're good to go and uh, but I'm not going to install or reinstall the coil and the reason for that is when I look down in here I noticed that these wires have all been re unsoldered at one time really crappy solder job but putting them back together so I went down in there and kind of looked real close and what I see is electrical tape yeah that's not good whenever you see electrical tape in a radio or in a television or in anything <laughs> that's this old there's a problem find out why the electrical tape is there so I will be unsoldering these same wires and they will be soldered back together much better than they are now and I'm going to remove, lift this thing up. You have to remove these wires in order to lift this up. I guess it's Bakelite or something of that nature. It'll, it'll lift it com completely up and we'll be able to look down inside there. And uh, before doing that, I may decide to remove this, I don't know, I may remove this whole mess and then start de-rusting the inside of this cabinet. I don't know. I might just unsolder first, take a look, and then make the decision then. But we'll do all that in the next video. Uh, I appreciate you watching once again, and we'll see you next time. This is John.